everybody, welcome to number 27. I'm Jack and this is a TWR Jaguar XJS. It is a result of a racing partnership between Tom Walkinshaw and Jag. Now you wouldn't immediately think that the XJS was a good platform for a race car. After all, it's one of the most comfortable GTs around, very softly sprung and just didn't really ever give the intention of being a sporting car. But in 1982, Walkingshaw approached Jaguar and said that he wanted to use this in the European Touring Car Championship. Although it was a heavy beast, there were quite a few things that worked in its favour with the regulations at the time. The first is it had independent suspension all round. Secondly, it had fuel injection. The intake manifold had to remain as it was. Having injection really helped to overcome that limitation. Lastly, the standard cars already had quite wide tyres. During the racing, you were sort of limited to the maximum width of what the road cars would have in terms of tyres. TWR had real successes with this. In 82, the first year that it raced, they already managed to get second place. The same in 1983, and I think it was even closer. And in 84, they won the Touring Car Championship. It was only because Jaguar decided from 1985 onwards to concentrate its efforts on Le Mans, again, with the assistance of TWR, that they stopped pushing these. So after that, it could have been even more successful, but after that, they didn't really campaign it in the same way. Let's pull over now, and I'm quickly just gonna tell you what makes an XJS a TWR XJS. Before Jaguar started officially producing under Jaguar Sport, the XJRS it was called, to get a TWR XJS like this one, you basically had a couple of possible packages, but a whole series of options that you could go through. We're just gonna show you now on this car. So the first thing which you can see here is the aerodynamic body kit. So that includes the front bumper, the side sills, the rear bumper, and the spoiler. Altogether, it was supposed to add about 10% aerodynamic efficiency, and it also helped to reduce lift at the front. Next, it's what TWR called the low drag wheels, which also had some bigger tires on them, 225s at the front and 245s at the back. The next thing was the suspension, which consisted of lower, stiffer springs. I think they're about an inch lower than standard. Also, bespokely set up Bilstein dampers, and at least some of the cars also had two of the rear bushes, which were changed for some stiffer units. At 800 pounds, the suspension kit seems to be like good value. For double that, 1,700, you could also have the bigger brakes. The twin exhausts show that this also has the high efficiency kit. What that did is added 10% in power with a freer flowing exhaust and air induction kit. A specific TWR leather stick steering wheel completes the list of options that were ticked for this car. Also available, but much more rarely chosen, was a six litre engine conversion and a five-speed gearbox, both of those being very expensive. The manual gearbox was 5,800 pounds and the engine conversion, 6,500. As it is, this package would have come in at 9,400 pounds if bought as a series of options without the engine and gearbox, obviously. Um, there is also a tweak to the steering rack, which I'm not sure if it has been done on this one or not, but we'll find out when I drive it. Some people prefer the more original lines of the non-body kitted cars with the steel bumpers, and I guess they are more delicate, but personally, I think that they did a very good job with this. It gives it just the right air of, of menace, and there is nothing that looks quite like an XJS, let alone an XJRS or one of these earlier TWR prepared cars. I haven't driven an XJRS. Those came as standard with that upgraded lower sort of assistance steering rack. Um, but on the evidence of what I've felt so far, I think this one didn't have that mod. It feels pretty standard sort of XJS to me, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. 
it's still quite a nice steer. It's just very, very light. You do get some feedback, not a massive amount, enough to know what those front wheels are doing. And the speed of the steering is pretty well judged. Like all performance Jags of the last few years, although this does have stiffer suspension, it is still a very, very comfortable car. You feel the road a lot more than you would in a standard XJS, and it's definitely more taut as well. Let's see what it's like through these S's, bearing in mind that this isn't really the natural place where you would want this to be, even the sports version. Well, it definitely corners a lot more flatly than a normal one. Now with this package, I think it's supposed to be 310 horsepower, the 5.3, maybe another 10 horsepower with the uh, exhaust system. Under normal circumstances, you really can't hear it. It's just whisper quiet. When you put your foot down and it goes above sort of two and a half thousand three, you get a nice growl from it, but it's still quite muted. It does feel like a heavy car. And I'm quite glad that it's got the upgraded brakes turning is pretty positive it's still a big beast so as i said this isn't really the natural environment for it and you can feel it you just can't disguise the weight when you have those really tight corners it's still pretty good um, but it just doesn't feel like it's that happy doing it as soon as you get here the road opens up a little bit and you've got some longer radius curves which are quicker then it seems to come into its own and it feels a lot more comfortable. One of the interior options that you could get through TWR was to have some Scottish tweed inserts in the centers of the seats. This doesn't have that. It has all the beauty, I think, and the charm of the standard XJS interior. These pre-facelift cars still have those the little tumblers and the instruments, um, which are just lovely and very much of their time. The one thing about the interior which would be a problem for taller people like me is that there is very, very little room, especially considering the overall size. A super 80s touch is the car phone, which wisely, I think, Dave has left in here. It even has the old British Telecom logo that really takes me back. By 1988, Jaguar got officially involved in this project. They formed Jaguar Sport, which was initially 50% owned um, by Tom Walkingshaw. And I think after a year, he opted out of it and Jaguar continued on their own. Those cars started off with the 5.3 litre, which is the same engine as this. But the later cars had a six litre with 330 horsepower instead of 310. Lack of power isn't something that I feel is an issue with this. The steering, if you're looking for a sports car, definitely does get in the way a little bit, as does the gearbox. The manual versions with the upgraded steering, I think would have made a big difference to the overall feel. In this spec, without the manual gearbox and without the upgraded steering rack, you still really can't describe this as a full-on sports car. Having said that, as a package, with the distinctive looks, the chassis which is much better tied down, this is a very, very appealing car. I think that if you want to drive it a little bit more spirited than a normal XJS, this is really a great compromise. You don't have as much of the floatiness and you can throw it around corners a little bit harder than you would the standard car. There's nothing quite as relaxing as driving an XJS of this era. The seats are wonderfully supportive and comfortable. The suspension, even on this modified TWR version, is very, very cosseting. The whole experience from the whisper from the V12, the effortless power, and of course, the charm of the interior, and knowing that you're in something so different and in a car that knew what it wanted to be wasn't trying to be everything, it was primarily a GT and it works very well for that. 
Thank you so much to Dave for bringing it down and let me experience what is really a very rare car. Thank you to you for watching. If you want me to do a review on one of your cars, please contact me here and we'll see if we can arrange something. Thank you so much and see you for the next one.